Chapter 3. Warnings, Safeguards, and Precautions. Law of the Bedroom number 55. Guys, safeguard your emotions. You know, they say love is when you look into someone's eyes and suddenly you see all inside their heart and their soul and you both know it. Well, if love was only so easy to find as such, it's not. And so that's why starting off this chapter, you know, warnings, safeguards, and precautions. And guys, this is directed at you, you know, us, we dudes, you know, we have to safeguard our own emotions so that, you know, we're not used, abused, taken advantage of, etc. Because it can happen to some degree or another, you know, a little or a lot. So I've got these uh, precautions here. Just want you to check them out. I'm going to read them to you. And just listen to the things that you need to be protected going into any relationship. Because as you acquire all this knowledge of loss of the bedroom, you're going to become quite attractive. You know, you're going to meet someone. You're going to get along. You're going to spend more time together. And she's going to realize what a great guy you are. And we don't know her yet. But she's so used to being stepped on and used and abused and kicked to the curb that when she meets you, She's like found heaven, paradise, you know, paradise island. Ooh, I just want to stay here forever. So we have to be careful and on our guard when somebody comes into our world. Because as they say, a man's home is his castle. And so is your heart. And you need to protect it. So let's get into it. Protect your heart, your self-esteem, and your emotions. Is your emotional relationship growing comparatively to your level of commitment? That is... Don't get in too deep, too fast, because when you become emotionally pulled into a relationship, it could result in a broken heart. Even when you think you are truly in love, ease up a little bit. Put on the brakes some, if you think you might be putting the cart before the horse. Avoid talking about commitment until you're both ready. Don't become the object of dashed hopes and dreams because you allowed someone to fracture your spirit. So, going into the relationship, you know, I don't want to say be a little standoffish or guarded, but you should be. Remember that motto of mine, trust no one, suspect everyone. And everybody, each party, the guy, the girl, no matter who comes to the table, everybody's got to prove themselves. They've got to show up. They've got to perform. They've got to act right. They've got to talk right, be right, do right. Or else they're not getting into your camp forever at all. All right, let's move on. Don't get involved with a woman who doesn't appreciate you, okay? Women appreciate good men, and if you are a good man of integrity, then you should be only interested in good women. You know, as your knowledge base increases with how you treat yourself based on loss of the bedroom, because you're going to become pretty smart, pretty wise. You're going to start treating yourself way better. So the woman that comes into your world needs to treat you pretty darn near equal. And if she's not pulling her weight around the uh, the house or around the relationship, and I don't mean her weight, you know what I'm talking about, you know, performing uh, duties of just common decency and conversation and thought, you know, then no, 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 no. And I even have a, uh, a little motto, whereas if you want to know who your true friends are, do you know how you tell? How do you, how do you tell who your true friends are? What I do is I run ahead of the pack. I leave the pack. I run ahead of the pack. And those people who chase me down, those are my real friends. In other words, I'm not going to call out to them. I'm not going to say, hey, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy, well, maybe Happy Birthday. That's different. But on the major holidays, I'm not going to do any of that anymore, per se. I want to see who reaches out to me. Because in the past, it's always been me first, me first, me first, me first. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. You know what? Forget it. I want to see who reaches out to me. Those are my true friends. So with the gal that comes into your life, you're still going to be on your course, your journey, your destiny. You're still going to be chasing your dreams and nothing's going to stop you. Let's see how she reacts to that. Hey, can I support you? Can I help you? Instead of, well, why don't you stop what you're doing and pay attention to me? Like, don't worry, you'll get plenty of attention, but no one's going to distract me from reaching my goal, period, because I'm a driven man. Rock on. So... You know, they're compelled to make these unworthy women love them and treat them well, believing that the next time things will work out. Get real. You deserve to be treated with respect. So if you find that the woman you're attracted to 
isn't capable of giving you what you need due to some bad experience, whether it's yours or hers, you know, where you've suffered emotional harm, then you need to actively make a different relationship choice. And you deserve to be happy and feel loved, period. And with loss of the bedroom, you're going to rise to the occasion and love her 110%, 1,000%. Let's see how she matches that. Does she come close? You know, 99%. <laughs> you know, but to that degree, you don't have time to waste with someone who's not fully and 100% committed, period. And what can happen is it can wake the woman up. You know, she realizes, wow, you really are a good thing. I better clean up my act. I better fly right. I better come to the table and really work hard. Relationships take work, and you're not going to do all the work. You'll do 51%. She'll do 49 You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying. You know, there ain't going to be no 80-20 or 70-30 or 60-40. I don't, I don't mind 51-49, but once you start dipping down 47% on her behalf, what's going on there? It's going to get to 46, 45. It's only going to go down. Always make people work to get to you. Work to be a part of your life. Earn it. Skin in the game. Perhaps you've accumulated a lot of money. Again, this chapter is very important. Warnings, safeguards, and precautions. That's why I put it here before we got into the, the juicy stuff. Which I can't wait to get to, too. <laughs> no one likes to feel manipulated. You know, why do women, for example, manipulate men? Well, the easy answer is because they can and because men allow it. Sometimes men are just clueless to manipulation because the sexes are wired differently. Who knows? Maybe she's studied men to understand what makes them tick in order to effectively decipher how she will react in different situations. One way women do this is through avoidance and refusing to give a man the attention he craves. Women are also good at using sex as bait to get what they want. This means that she will invariably get a second chance to maneuver and subtly repeat her desires until she gets what she wants. That's not to say that men don't do their own share of manipulating, for sure. However, this said, a healthy relationship has no place for emotional manipulation, controlling anyone or men or women who use each other. We should see it for what it is and stop the manhandling or woman. You know, in Laws of the Bedroom, what have you heard so far about your own horniness, your own sex drive. Yes, of course, you know, increase your sex drive, but also keep it at bay. Keep it controlled. Keep it under, <laughs> under your thumb, you know. If you can control your own sexual urges and not be so horny and thirsty, she can't manipulate you with sex. Well, I just won't give you any. Like, no problem. Because what happens is a man, in accordance with laws of the bedroom, implementing every law, to the T. She will be the one that starts craving it and wanting it more because you give her so much quality and then you are absent for a while. She starts feeling these withdrawals. I I'm serious. She starts going through sexual withdrawals. She starts feeling horny. Now, is she going to cheat and go somewhere else? No way because she knows you are the best thing that's come around to her. And she knows that if she does cheat, she's gone. And you're on to somebody who's more respectful of you and your efforts to be good to a woman. So what happens is the ability to manipulate you with sex is gone, out the window, no more. No, I can't even imagine in my whole lifetime, ever, did a woman try to manipulate me with sex, like withholding it. I'm like, go for it. I can withstand, you know, going without it way longer than you can. And the quality between the sex we had was so great, she remembers it. And she's like, oh my God. A week later, two weeks later, a month later, she's like, I've been thinking about you. I can't stop thinking about how you take care of me and treat me. I want it. And I'm able to say, I don't know if I want to give it to you. Have you been a good girl or a bad girl? And of course, you know, then you get into the fun dialogue. I've been bad. All right. Why don't you come over? And then the, the tables are turned, you know? So it's fun stuff. It's fun stuff, you know, but just safeguard your heart and your emotions. These are warnings and precautions. The last one in this law of the bedroom, number 55, safeguard your emotions, is keep your personal business private. I'm going to say it again. Keep your personal business private. The more you share your intimate and private moments you have with your gal, 
with your lady friends or your male friends, you immediately open up yourself for judgment and maybe embarrassment. The intimate moments you shared with your special gal are exclusively yours. There are just some things that should remain confidential out of respect and honor for the other person. It helps to create a foundation of trust for your relationship in this way. It's not only not healthy to discuss your cherished intimate moments with outsiders, it's unacceptable. And I'm telling you, don't do it. It's risky business. So the next time you even think about complaining about your partner or sharing a small detail about your making love and, you know, consider her feelings and consider your privacy. Will what you are about to say hurt her or you or damage the relationship? You already know the answer. Don't do it. What's more, and I've had discussions uh, like this with women who I've talked to, and they start to realize, you know, they say to me, Bart, you never open up and talk about, you know, your relationships or, you know, if you're in a relationship, you never talk about that stuff. I said, I, that's because I don't want to. It's my business. I'm already kind of out there. We're all kind of out there. Social media, Facebook, your personal page, everybody kind of knows your business. What's left to save for your own privacy and personal enjoyment on a private level? Nothing. My gosh. So I've taken a stand that I'm not going to tell much about me, my sexual relations and what I'm doing and, you know, unless it's more on an instructional basis, like Laws of the Bedroom. This is a book. So I'm sharing wisdom and ideas and tactics and what to do's and what not to do's. That's on an instructional level. But I tell you something, I've been around, you know, guy friends and they're just dropping all of these stories about this or that and I had sex here and this and that and I'm just listening to this and personally I'm sick of it. I'm sick of hearing about all this crap. It's none of my business. I don't want to I don't want to picture, you know, my male friends naked with these women. I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. And they never hear it from me. Never. And you know what's funny? They don't even ask. Well, sometimes they ask. But many times they don't ask. They just blabber at the mouth with their escapades and their occurrences and their activities with their girls, their ladies, their friends, their wives, you know, uh, stuff like that. And I wonder if they even care about what's going on in my world. Not that I care, but it just, it's an observation that they're so into themselves and their own stupid world that all they can do is talk about, yeah, I just did this, yeah, last night. Well, you know, I had these girls come over, you know, I don't give a hoot. I don't care. I don't want to hear about it. And reverse that table. Reverse it around to you. Don't you tell other people about your business. Keep your personal business private. Okay, I've said enough on that. I could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about it, but I won't. Do you get it? Are you going to start doing it? Are you going to start keeping your personal business private? Comment in the comments box below and tell me about what you feel about safeguarding your emotions, protecting your heart, your self-esteem, your emotions. Don't get involved with women who don't appreciate you. No one likes to feel manipulated. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated. And keep your personal business private. Mm, good stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Come on, let's continue to the next law of the bedroom. Number 56, learn to properly communicate sexually with your gal.